This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories right now. Voters in more than a dozen states across the country, including California, are getting ready to head to the polls if they haven't already. NBC7 crews are at some voting centers this afternoon, and we were there this morning in Kearney Mesa as well as the first round of voters turned in their ballots. Already the local registrar says they are seeing more enthusiasm among voters for California's primary. For me, on a national level, it's, it's the, the democracy. It's, it's making sure that we stay the country that we are. Every election that has ever been up, I've voted, even when I was overseas. The registrar says compared to this point in the March 2020 primary, more voters have already cast their ballots by either mailing it in or dropping it off. Several at the voting centers say they felt a sense of responsibility to get their vote in. It's a good thing to do as an American citizen. And you guys have to get out there and vote. It definitely matters. Because your vote does matter. Look at when, when George Bush uh, won the first time. It was about a handful of votes. When uh, Kennedy won, it was a handful of votes. You know, here and there makes a difference. So the vote makes a difference. There you have it. San Diegans will also be choosing a candidate to replace the seat of the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. All four Senate candidates for our state spent their last hours before the primary campaigning here in Southern California. Oakland Representative Barbara Lee was in the San Fernando Valley, ending the day with dinner in Burbank. Also in Burbank, Representative Adam Schiff, who spoke to union workers in the film and TV industry. Former Dodger and Padre legend Steve Garvey made an appearance on primetime TV at Fox News Channel's LA studio. And from her Irvine campaign headquarters, Representative Katie Porter hit cable news. She's expected to hold a meet and greet with union workers in San Diego today. NBC7 is your source for election results. We'll keep you updated throughout election night starting at 8 o'clock. We'll have a special um, report, special coverage on our streaming channel. Just search San Diego News on Roku or other streaming devices and NBC7.com has all you need to know. Just click on that decision 2024 um, bar there on the trending bar. And tonight, San Diego Unified teachers and staff may get some answers about who could be getting a pink slip. The board will consider more than 400 layoffs as the district faces more than $93 million budget deficit. District officials say the deficit is due to an end of federal COVID funding and much less funding expected from the state. So where exactly are these cuts expected? We were told by the superintendent that they would keep the cuts as far away from the classroom as possible, which means central office. So the district says in some cases a position at a school may be eliminated, but not the person filling that role. They may be bumped into a new campus. If the proposals are adopted by the school board tonight, employees will find out on Friday if they have been laid off. Chilling new details about the accused gunman who killed a dentist and injured two workers in El Cajon. A family member of a surviving victim says the gunman who will be in court today for his arraignment harassed workers in the dental office prior to last Thursday's shooting. Mohammed Abdul Karim is accused of killing Dr. Benjamin Haruni last Thursday. Haruni was laid to rest over the weekend. Two office workers were also shot and they are still in the hospital. One of them is the office manager, George Usayan. His wife told us she was shot five times and played dead to survive. She also said the suspect was a disgruntled patient who was unhappy with his dental work and had been complaining since 2022. The other injured office worker is an administrative assistant named Yarieli Carrillo. She was shot in both legs. Her family tells us she took her first steps yesterday, but still has a long way to go. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hey, Monica, as we head through the afternoon, all the clouds will be sticking around still, but we'll be dry mid 60s for the coast and inland valleys. Mountains will be in the 50s, a breezy west wind and for the deserts we will be in about the upper 70s. Let's look ahead to tomorrow, though, because we do have rain tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, that's what we're looking at here. Still dry tomorrow afternoon after about lunchtime. Some light showers move in breezy onshore winds. The rain may get a little heavier tomorrow afternoon and evening for the evening commute. Breezy onshore wind, and then we'll have a chance of thunderstorms overnight and rain lingers into early Thursday. Thank you, Sheena. Thousands of dollars in cash and irreplaceable family valuables taken. The new surveillance video investigators are trying to string in burglaries of Mira Mesa. 
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, getting results. San Diego families promised an affordable home. We said, you know, finally, we're going to have a place where we can live in. Giving thousands to a man who said their money would also help homeless veterans. I feel sorry for the people he lied to. Now, after our investigation, there's a warrant out for his arrest, helping San Diego families finally get justice. I really, really appreciate your work. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, fighting for you. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. Burglaries in Mira Mesa continue to grow with as many as five happening in just the past few days. San Diego police believe that all of them are related. Over the weekend, five burglars broke into a North County home. They're described as men in their late teens and early 20s. San Diego police believe all the cases are connected since they use the same tactics. They say the suspects identify the home and enter through a back sliding glass door. In some cases, they break the door to gain entry like the case of one victim who didn't want to be identified. All the juries. So I came from China. I have a generation and generations, mother-in-laws and moms, all those juries. Seems like uh, something that they thought ahead of time and, and profile the house where, uh, when, you know, people leave. San Diego police released this picture of a man to believe to be one of the suspects. They are asking anyone with information on these burglaries. Take a look here to call Crime Stoppers immediately. In a first of its kind arrest, a San Diego man has been charged for smuggling greenhouse gases into the country following a recent law aimed at slowing climate change. 58 year old Michael Hart is accused of buying refrigerants in Mexico, hiding them in his car and smuggling them into the U.S. Hart is also accused of selling them online. The EPA says potent greenhouse gases like these are normally used for refrigeration, aerosols and air conditioning and can be hundreds to thousands of times more potent than carbon dioxide. A University of San Diego alum has made it to the International Space Station. Matthew Dominic is the commander of Crew 8 on his first ever space flight. The four man crew arrived at the ISS early this morning after launching from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on Sunday. Three NASA astronauts and a Russian cosmonaut will spend the next six months living and working on the ISS. They are reliving the members of Crew 7, or relieving rather, of Crew 7, who will be heading home to Earth sometime next week. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm ABC 7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, we'll continue to see the clouds, so kind of a mix of clouds with some sunshine, mid 60s for the coast and inland valleys. For the mountains, we'll stay in the 50s today and deserts about the upper 70s. We have rain in the forecast tomorrow. Mostly it's looking like tomorrow afternoon, some light showers, and then tomorrow evening, some of that rain could be a little heavier, breezy onshore wind. Thunderstorm chance late tomorrow night, showers linger into early Thursday. The weekend looks great and dry, and in the mountains Wednesday night, snow levels around 5,500 feet. Thank you, Sheena. When we hear about someone earning a college athletic scholarship, our minds typically go to star athletes playing football or maybe soccer, but teenage twins from Oceanside, well, they took a different route, wiping down clubs and carrying bags. Ada and Annabelle Lee received the Western Golf Association's Chick Evans Scholarship for being golf caddies. Four years of housing and tuition taken care of. The twins began caddying a few years ago, working at Goat Hill, where they are now the stars of the course. When our scholarship was announced, I was caddying for this one member and he kept on like flaunting me. He's like, I have an Evan Scholar on my bag. This place is my second home. I've met so many people that have supported me, like deeply supported me, which I find this place so comfortable to be in. And then it's brought me so many new memories, new experiences, and just like brought, like changed my life really. Way to go. Ada and Annabelle are still considering a few colleges. They both plan on majoring in mechanical engineering and eventually work in the golf industry, possibly involved in making balls and clubs. More coverage account out at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Get out and vote.